Hey, so I recently had a friend of the channel reach out to me via email speaking to me about how he had a supervisor instructing him to do something that was putting his EMT certification in jeopardy. And I want to make this video to reply to him and also to let you guys know that a lot of times you're going to have people in the authority position, I quote unquote authority position, giving you advice on what to do and how to proceed on a certain situation and and these people can include but are not limited to the dispatchers your supervisors your co-workers the nursing staff and the other members of the healthcare team and i say that to say this my people a lot of times people's advice is relative to their personal opinion and their personal bias and whatever it is they have to gain from your actions for example i have an Perfect example is like when a dispatcher tries to tell you when you should eat, what time you should go to the bathroom. They're not taking into consideration whether or not you're a type 1 or type 2 diabetic. They're not taking into consideration what is your blood glucose level. They're taking into consideration exclusively how many patients they have on their dispatch screen and how soon they want to get this done and out of the way so that they their workload is less. And you're the pawn. You're the one who's going to make it happen for them. So whenever you receive advice from a supervisor, for example, that'll tell you, listen, you might be missing an extra pediatric defib pad but you're okay go in service as is don't take their advice look at your checklist and make sure that it's aligned with what the protocols and the local laws for your department of health and your emergency medical service com is considered to be complying and compliance with the checklist and what it is that you need bare minimum on the ambulance because a lot of times that lack of equipment is something that they are not able to deal with yet they still want you to go on the road and go in service don't take their advice you'll also hear this advice from crews that you leave from the night before so if you come in in the morning you got guys in the nighttime who decide to just go to sleep and they don't gas up their vehicle they don't switch out the oxygen that's already used they don't restock medications and then they leave you with the burden of having to do it so instead of going in service what you can do is just communicate to the dispatcher listen this is unit 17 sam 17 will 18 x-ray we're at a service from tour three tour three being the the tour from the overnight do not go in service refrain from going in service and making yourself available because somebody else talked you into it make sure that you take your time and make sure you have everything you need because a lot of times again the people who try to push you towards going in service and doing what they keep incentivizing you to do is someone who doesn't care about you i'll give you an example we had a guy pull a gun out on us in the bronx we were an als unit on a hot busy summer day we removed ourselves from the scene without instruction from the dispatcher because the dispatcher was taking too long to answer. We just left. Patient abandonment or scene safety BSI. I guess it was up to the judge, right? But we never reached the judge. What I do have to tell you about this job is that once we had about 20 minutes to half an hour removed from the scene waiting for further instruction, he did not reply to us. He didn't get back to us. So I took it upon myself. Hey, listen, uh, this is what happened. And we're still waiting for further instruction do you have an eta on the police department because we want to help this person but we need to help them with the right resources his instruction to me was listen the police department is still unavailable we don't have an eta but please circle back around that block and find out if the perpetrator is still there like let that sink in this was the dispatcher's advice on a recorded line telling me to go back to the scene where the guy had just previously pulled a gun out on us in the bronx why because he needed an als unit in service whether he did it consciously or unconsciously he was thinking more about keeping us in service and getting us through this job more than he was thinking about our safety what if the guy i, I immediately i told him like Say that again? Nah, bro, I'm going to stay right here. Let me know when PD comes. And then he realized, he was like, okay, cool, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. So 
what I mean is don't worry to, don't worry about speaking up. If you have to speak up, then go by all means go right ahead. Because at the end of the day, your health, your safety is your responsibility, not on anybody else's. Your certification is your responsibility. You cannot use as an excuse, oh, the people from the overnight didn't restock. You cannot use as an excuse of driving with a suspended license. Oh, the, the, the supervisor said it's okay. So with this message, my people, understand you have people who have bias and their bias may lead you to do something that's hindering your progress in life, whether it's on or off the ambulance. Take advice from people that are or are on their way to be where you want to be. Like, I'll listen to a janitor on how to live a happily married life if he's having a happily married life. But I'm not going to listen to the same janitor on how to reach financial freedom because obviously he apparently doesn't have it from working as a janitor. I hope this helps. Peace.